So I've received a fair amount of questions specifically regarding tendon training for grip strength. So I put together a more condensed version of the longer form video where I compared the differences between training muscles and tendons specifically for grip strength and grapplers. And I'll even give you examples of exercises and case studies to go along with it. All right, tendons, non-contractile. So the muscle contracts. The tendon distributes the force from the muscle to the bone, and then the bone moves, okay? Less vascularized, pretty self-explanatory. Doesn't have as good of a blood flow, therefore it adapts less, or excuse me, takes more time to adapt. And it also takes more time to heal if it is truly a tendinopathic injury or a pain in the tendon. It's stiffer than muscle. So it's what we call viscoelastic. Viscoelastic means that it has, it behaves mechanically like an elastic material and like a liquid. For example, let's say, I don't know, my desk is a pool of water and I stand up by the ceiling and I jump off and I do a belly flop. Boom, I hit and the muscles or the molecules of the water stay really close together. So I don't go anywhere and then I start to slowly float and I am writhing in agonizing pain because I just did a really good belly flop. Although the people drunk at the pool are very happy that I did that, okay? Now if I take my hand and I just, much more boring, but I put it through the plane of the top of the water, it allows for my hand to sink deeper and deeper much more quickly. And that is because the molecules of the water, due to the force of the load, are allowed to move. So this is what we mean by viscoelastic. It is based off of tendons and their molecular structure adapt based off of the rate of force that's put through them. We'll talk about this a little later. Okay, now it's comprised of collagen type one. So mainly, obviously again, much like muscle, there are other things that involved in the chemical makeup of a tendon, uh, but it's mainly type one collagen uh, and that allows, or that's mainly the reason for its stiffness or uh, the nature of it being stiff. And then it connects muscle to bone. So the muscle pulls on the tendon and then the tendon pulls on the bone, like we talked about earlier. So now we're talking about tendons. And if you want a stiffer tendon, which is consequently better for performance, which we'll talk about here in a second, we're gonna do more plyometric or power movements, like jumping, like cleaning jerks, uh, sprinting, things like that. You need to look no further than track athletes. They're very fast and they're very powerful very explosive. This is because their tendons are very stiff. And this is because the way that they are moving allows for cross-link formation. I think I wrote about, yeah, lysyl oxidase and sugars. Those are the, the, the chemicals that actually allow, or that are actually cross-linking, but that's not what's important here. Remember we talked about the belly flop, that quick force distribution for the water. The molecules didn't have a chance to move very quickly because of its viscoelastic nature. Same thing with the tendon. If we're putting a lot of pressure or a lot of force through these collagen fibers, the cross links form because every time you try to put force to, through it, it doesn't actually allow for them to move, right? So every time we sprint, every time we jump, more cross links are being formed and the stiffer the tendon gets. Now, this is good for performance. However, how many times have you seen somebody sprinting at a high level and injure their hamstring? Your tendons can become stiffer than your muscles are strong. So there is a balance to be reached here. Now we won't get too much into the, the injured portion. Again, I need to say this, this is all healthy tissue, okay? When it comes to injured tissue, it's a completely different story for how you would load and program certain things. This is for if you want your grip strength to get better. All right, now for tendon elasticity, which tends to be better for health. So we're talking mainly about the portion of the tendon that is closer to the muscle or the musculotendinous junction. Whenever we're doing a very good squat, the musculotendinous junction of let's say the Achilles tendon, and we're moving very slow and we're moving in a very controlled manner, much like taking my hand and putting it through the plane of the water, the molecules are allowed to move back and forth along one another. And the, it minimizes cross-link formation so the tendon does not get as stiff which is a pretty good thing, especially for the musculotendinous junction because its job, it, if you were to ask an engineer to take something elastic and connect it to something that's non-elastic, they would have a cow because it's very hard to do mechanically. Well, our bodies are constantly adapting to try and 
do that for us. So where the muscle meets the tendon, we want it to be a little bit elastic because it's attaching something elastic to something inelastic, like a bone. So at the bone, we want it to be stiff. And then at the muscle end, we want it to be elastic. Again, there's a balance to be made. The literature or common principles seem to suggest, or the people who talk about the most seem to suggest, that whenever you're in the off season, you focus on tendon health. And then whenever you ramp up to your uh, athletic event, then you try to get your tendon more stiff if explosiveness is what you want, which it is what you want if you're a combat athlete. <laughs> You'd be hard pressed to try to convince me that combat athletes do not need to be strong and powerful. This lecture is about improving your grip strength specifically for judo, wrestling, jiu-jitsu, all the grappling sports, okay? So again, minimizes cross-link formation and is better for health and longevity. So here I'm thinking about maybe the older guy, probably in his 40s, who gets the bug, he's been listening to a Jocko podcast or whatever, and he's like, I wanna do jiu-jitsu. And he comes in and he doesn't know where to start, okay? That's, I would, I would say from a resistance training perspective, moving slow and controlled with wrist curls or just really working on a nice pulling movement uh, is probably gonna be better for the tendon health because we want you to do better for the long term and start to learn that new skill of jiu-jitsu or judo or wrestling and be healthy while doing it rather than trying to focus on performance at that age. Exercise examples for each of these. So I postulate that it's better to train for tendon stiffness if you want better performance for your grip strength in the gym. Or excuse me, in, uh, for jiu-jitsu, wrestling, or what am I forgetting, judo. So uh, especially for younger folks who are trying to compete and get better at, uh, on a national, or state, a national, or world level. I think your tendons need to be very stiff and be able to distribute force quickly and minimize that cross-link formation, or excuse me, um, promote that cross-link formation so that they get stiff. However, we don't want it to get too stiff because jujitsu jiu jujitsu players or, or wrestlers notoriously have uh, muscle issues because their tendons are stronger than they are than their muscles are strong, or tendons are stiffer than their muscles are strong. So, something like a hanging dynamic grip change, and those, these will be up on the screen. So you're hanging and you're actually moving down, you're changing your grips really quickly, it's having to combat the weight of your, your body, uh, and it's constantly changing, but you're having to produce a lot of force at once, okay? Maybe doing these like 30 seconds, taking a 30 second break, and then doing it again. Not too taxing for your forearms, uh, but really good stimulus for tendon stiffness, okay? The push up to the finger hold, again, this is gonna be on the screen, but you, you explode up, and then boom, you catch your body on your fingertips and then handstand walks or, or handstand holds uh, because your tendons are maximally elongated in that position and, in, and anybody who's ever worked on handstands will tell you that the control of the handstands actually comes from the pressure on the ground from your fingertips. The fingertips are, are the muscles that control the wrist and the fingertips are essentially your, your muscles that are heavily involved in grip, okay? And then for tendon elasticity, uh, really any wrist curl variation. We'll use myself as an example. Um, I was actually able to double my grip strength in like 12 weeks. Uh, and I made a video about it. I'll, I'll put the link in the description. Uh, but I will caveat it. I had a forearm injury when I was younger playing football and I have some hardware in my arm made to hard. And after I did physical therapy, uh, I never really called up my grip strength to my right hand. I had a lot of neuromuscular and neural gains to make and my tendons also, in, in the first four weeks, I started doing hypertrophy training. So anything like we're about to talk here, wrist curl variations, really slow and controlled. Did some slow rice bucket movement. So you stick your hands in the rice bucket and you move very slowly up and down. So those collagen fibers minimize cross-link formation and they're actually able to stay more elastic, particularly at the muscular tendinous junction. But then the last eight weeks, I focused on the tendon stiffness. So I was doing more rock climbing holds, I was doing more rag pull-ups or inverted rows to mimic like holding a gi, things like that. Go check that out if you want. So I actually have a PDF of the actual program that I have. Uh, and if you just send me a DM or, or an email, I can kind of walk you through how I set that up. But yeah, these are some exercise examples of what we would use for your grip strength. And let's get into some cases because this is really, really what I want you to kind of get. Okay, case number two, we got a 27 year old. 
He's been wrestling for 15 years, five years of doing BJJ. He wants to focus on grip strength specifically. He trains BJJ three times a week and lifts twice a week, and he's been lifting for about three years. So he's on the later end of novice, probably maybe an intermediate if he lifted when he was younger and then just kind of took a break or whatever. But the first thing I want to note here is he's probably got really good tendon development from wrestling at a young age. We know, or we can be reasonably certain, the consensus is, is pretty clear that you you start laying down collagen uh, in your in your tendons for the first 18 years, 17 to 18 years of your life, and then after that, the new collagen stops being laid down. So the collagen or the tendons that you have to work with is pretty much set for you at 17 or 18 years old. Now, if you start wrestling or start rock climbing at a young age, your tendons are going to be very big and well-developed from having done that at a young age up until 18. So he's already got a really good foundation here for tendon health. This is gonna focus on tendon stiffness for performance. Since he wants to be able to improve his performance and we know that we wanna minimize cross-link formation, there is gonna be a certain part of his program that includes some of the exercises we talked about before uh, that really put a, a lot of strain and force distribution through, powerful force distribution through his fingers uh, in different ways that mimic grappling and the way that we have to dynamically change our grips and throw and things like that. Those are gonna be again at the beginning of his program. So we might start off with those push-ups to the fingers uh, and then we might switch to, you know, if you've got the pull-up bars that are stacked, you might pull yourself up, catch the pull-up bar, catch the pull-up bar, back down or back to the rope. Any, any sort of variation of those that puts a ton of force distribution through the tendons of your fingers and your hands. And that's gonna be the first five to 10 minutes and then you go on with your lifting session after that. We're also gonna to need to minimize, how do I say this without pissing people off because the combat sport culture is very against this it seems like. You're gonna to need to start managing your volume on the mats. If you want to target your training to something specific, it, and this is true for any sport, you have to either put the rest of your activities on maintenance volume or don't don't take them out completely just minimize their volume for example if you're used to going hard every single every single time you train for three days a week and you've been able to do that because this guy's of five years of bjj and 15 years of wrestling he's probably he's probably a blue belt or definitely a blue belt probably a purple belt by now he can probably just do what he wants to with everybody when you start adding something adding more to your central nervous system like really quick, powerful movements do, you have to manage your volume elsewhere. And so I would actually have him do light rolling days, positional work, working on things that are weak for his game, uh, and, and really just kind of focusing on technique rather than going balls to the wall. And then placed after a rest day, one hard rolling day so that you, so that you still maintain the cardio that you need uh, for, for uh, something like a competition. And again, the, the Grip strength specific exercise are going to be at the beginning of lifting days so you can uh, harness the full power of your central nervous system and the neural drive that you have. Okay, so those are the two cases that I've got. If you got something from these excerpts and you want to watch the longer form video, it'll be linked in the description below. Let me know any of the questions or recommendations you have for future videos down in the comments. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.